Good morning, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and welcome to another edition of Breaking News. Today is Wednesday. It's the 23rd day of October 2024. And like we do here every morning, we give you the stories and the news that have something to do with what the Bible says our world is going to be like at the time of the end of the age, the church age, which will culminate in the second coming of Jesus Christ. But there's a number of events the Bible predicts that will take place before that, and that's what we're interested in sharing with you because the stage is being set for these events to take place. And that's why we do what we do every day. It's here for encouragement. It's here for edification. And it's here to let you know God's in control. So we want you to be calm. We want you to be, you know, even keeled when all this nonsense is going on in our world, understanding there is an end game here and the Lord's in control. And so let's always understand it in that manner. Okay. And again, uh, if you're new to us, the Bible and the Bible alone is our textbook, our guide, which we use. We do the best we can in understanding what it has to say concerning these events. And uh, we our key verse is 1 Corinthians 4, 6, which we cite quite often. We don't go beyond that, which is written. We stick with the instruction manual. We stick with the textbook the best we can. All right, let's look at the headlines. First one, number one, uh, B.B., Benjamin Netanyahu, this is a great headline. He rebuffs Antony Blinken's demands on Gaza and Iran. Blinken came and went, and basically Netanyahu showed him the door. We're going to do what we want to do with respect to Iran, Lebanon, uh, Gaza, and um, this is our business, and we're not going to share any of these um, attack plans ahead of time with you, especially after this one. The plans were leaked the other day by the U.S., uh, in this very high-profile leak that we've talked about. So anyway, that that's really good news. Uh, Saudi Arabia, now here's a huge story, calls on the international community to hold Israel accountable for Jews going up to the Temple Mount. Temple Mount, again, in the headlines, Temple Mount Center State for last day's Bible prophecy we've talked about many times. Now here's something that was just released, and this is scary. The bedroom window in Netanyahu's home was hit on Saturday's Hezbollah drone strike. Now remember, we talked about the drone strike hitting the area of Caesarea where his house is. Well, the military sensors have released a picture of his home, and actually the bedroom window was hit by a, this drone. Now, it didn't ca it caused some damage, but fortunately no one was there. So it was an assassination attempt, obviously, by Iran by means of Hezbollah, and we'll talk about that also a little bit too. And then, of course, um, nothing surprises us anymore about this character. Joe Biden, he embraces Trump lawfare by saying, we got to lock him up, lock up Donald Trump, you know, two weeks away from the presidential election. This lame duck, um, senile man is saying, we got to lock him up. He said that in a political rally in New Hampshire, and then he tried to walk it back. But uh, anyway, we'll talk about that also. Okay. One other thing before we get into the headlines, we're continuing, as we've been saying, it sounds like we've been doing it a long time to work on. Um, from our book, 45 Common Mistakes About Last Day's Bible Prophecy Cleared Up. We're going to be doing a series looking at some of the common mistakes and going into great detail on each one of why we shouldn't believe these particular things that are being taught simply because the Bible doesn't teach them. Now, what I've done, it's taken me forever and a day to get this one done because every time I think it's finished, something new comes up. So I'm learning a ton. It can be very complicated. It's the area of the so-called fall feasts that uh, some people are saying uh, predict the second coming of Christ or the rapture of the church at the time of the fall, September, October, particularly with the Feast of Trumpets, uh, uh, which is found in Leviticus 23, 23 to 25. And the answer is, as we're going to see, is it's absolutely not. There's no way. And what we do, we look at 22 specific facts, indisputable facts from the Bible about this issue. And like we say, this, this is what the Bible has to say. And with these facts, uh, there's really no way you can uh, argue for this uh, this theory, this uh, viewpoint of the um, fall feast and that. So we have that right now, actually, on the website. The latest update is there, Educating Our World. It's under uh, Bible Prophecy. You can download. It's not quite finished yet, but what I've done at the end, I've summarized the 22 points, and what we'll do, it's going to be my script, basically. I'll try and do it in less than 20 minutes when we record it to take you through what the Bible has to say about this issue and explain why it doesn't work. Now, again, this is what the Bible has to say. It's not me making this stuff up. These are 22 undisputed facts. And so uh, hopefully you'll want to watch them and deal with them and understand that we do this simply because we want to know what the Bible says. 
All right. And that's our key here. Why we're why we do what we do here on our website, educating our world our and our we got an app also EOW with Don Stewart. Don't mention that enough where you can you know, watch, you know, the videos and uh, download the th stuff for free also. OK, let's get to it. The headlines. This first one. I love it. <clears throat> BB, this is from Virtual Jerusalem. BB rebuffs Blinken's demands on Gaza and Iran. Uh, the Israeli prime Israeli prime minister holds firm on military strategy. He rejects U.S. pressure amidst heightened tensions as his popularity soars from hardline stance, assassination of enemy leaders, and military success. And so, uh, so much good is going on in that sense. And Netanyahu is <clears throat> his stature there in Israel has grown as it should. He's been being a great leader at this time. Okay, here's the story again from Virtual Jerusalem. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu rejected U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken's demands for transparency regarding Israel's planned strike against Iran and demanded disavowal of a proposed buffer zone in northern Gaza. In other words, we talked about the buffer zone in Gaza. They want to have a buffer zone between the Lebanese border on the on the Israel's north and, and where the Hezbollah can be or any, any combatants can be. And that's what they're trying to do to keep in these attacks against them from happening in the future. And Blinken basically says, we want you to disavow that. And um, basically Netanyahu told him to go pound sand. And so this is what's really good. So his firm stance highlights the determination uh, to maintain strategic autonomy and its military decision-making, even, even amidst pressure from its closest ally. I wouldn't know about its closest ally anymore, but anyway, that's the bottom line. All right, here's some of the, the, the facts about this. During Blinken's visit to Tel Aviv, he sought detailed information about Israel's plan to strike Iranian nuclear facilities. In other words, tell us exactly what you're going to do. And Netanyahu reiterated, no, we're going to act independently against the threats posed by Iran. We will not al allow Iran to acquire nuclear weapons. Israel will defend itself, but we're not going to tell you what we're going to do, which is great. So this response echoes Netanyahu's longstanding position that Israel cannot afford to rely solely on international diplomatic efforts to deter nuclear, Iran's nuclear ambitions, really. Uh, Defense Minister Gallant also expressed the sentiment during the press conference, the state of Israel must maintain the freedom to take action against the Iranian threat. He did not mention the high profile links of classified uh, links from the Pentagon on Israel strike preparations. And then there's the buffers zone debate. Again, Blinken voiced objections to the military plan proposed by senior IDF general, which involves creating a civilian-free buffer zone in northern Gaza to counter Hamas's entrenched positions. The plan intended to clear the area of civilians and enable military operations. It drew sharp criticism from the lame duck Biden administration, which raised humanitarian concerns. Yeah, really. Uh, <clears throat> He urged Netanyahu, that is Blinken, to disavow the plan, stating publicly, it is critical that Israel takes every possible precaution to avoid civilian harm. Uh, Blinken, they're already doing that. It's Hamas is causing the problem, and I guess he never got that memo. <clears throat> so a senior official told the Jerusalem Post that while Israel remains committed to minimizing civilian casualties, it will prioritize operational security to dismantle Hamas's terrorist infrastructure. And so that's an important point. And then there's been a boost in support, like we said, from the hardline approach. The latest polls show his Likud party has increased by five percentage points amongst the Israeli people, uh, creating a viable path for forming a stable coalition government. This is a different, a, a big change from last year's October 7th when he was in very bad shape politically. So this is good. This is very, very good news because the Israelis realize this is it. This is our... Our safety is a paramount concern, which doesn't seem to be the concern of anybody else in the world. So here's the key, and I love this last heading here. Departure of Blinken clears political path. With Blinken now having departed Israel, political analysts believe that Netanyahu faces no immediate impediment to executing his government military plans. It's widely understood that Israel would not initiate a major military strike or launch significant operations while Blinken was still in the country due to diplomatic sensitivities and U.S. concerns. Now that he's in the rearview mirror, Israeli military officials are reportedly preparing for heightened action. So it looks like they were waiting for him to come and go and, and say his piece. And now that he's gone, <clears throat> this attack, and it's like we talked about yesterday from this one retired general, he said it's going to be huge. And the battle back and forth could actually last several months. So anyway, um, our here's our uh, editorial on this. 
I say this is very good news for Israel. It fits the biblical scenario of the last days in three areas. First, Israel's northern border will be relatively free from attack. We know that's going to be the case because when they are invaded eventually, according to Ezekiel 38, 39, they're not expecting it. And that means they have to clear Hezbollah out from there. Second, Iran will not be the main power in the Middle East to destroy Israel. We know that it'll be Russia. Iran will be a secondary power that'll be a subordinate to Russia. We're, we've talked about that. And third, the United States will continue to slide as a superpower. And even if Trump wins the White House, these things are inevitable. Now, we talk about this, uh, this possible regional war. Again, in our, um, on our book, 25 Signs, we're near the end, Appendix 5. Would a regional war, you know, uh, between Iran and Israel fulfill Bible prophecy? And the answer is no, it wouldn't. There's no prophecy at all, prediction about a regional war involving Iran and Israel. The issue is that Ezekiel 38 is Russia-led invasion of Israel with Iran as a subordinate, but Russia calling the shots, and that's not what's happening right now. So anyway, that's great news. I'm glad to see this happen. And so what it seems now, from Israel's perspective, you got these holidays that are getting over. You've got Blinken out of the picture. You've only got a couple weeks before the election. And so it's time to do some do some damage you know, to Iran for what they have done twice now to Israel, sending these missiles over. All right, now here's the huge headline. <clears throat> Saudi Arabia calls on international community to hold Israel accountable for Jews going up to the Temple Mount. Uh, this came after a Sunday report last Sunday that National Security Minister Itamar Ben-Gavir arrived at the Temple Mount entrance with an entourage the foreign ministry, some of the Jerusalem Post, by the way, Saudi's foreign ministry called on the international community, particularly UN Secretary Council, the UN Sec Security Council, to hold Israel accountable for what it deems transgressions of sites holy to Islam located on the Temple Mount. <clears throat> this is posted on Twitter uh, Wednesday, uh, Monday. The kingdom calls on the international community, particularly the permanent members of the Security Council, to hold the occupation accountable for its serious and ongoing violations against Islamic holy sites. And innocent, innocent civilians in the state of Palestine and calls for immediate ceasefire. The statement read, first of all, there is no state of Palestine. There's no violation going on at the Islamic holy sites. The Temple Mount is the holiest site in, in Judaism. And so, again, you've got the usual uh, banter coming back. But the important thing is here, they expressed this publicly. Uh, they thought Ben Gavir was going to make another entrance to the Temple Mount. He did not go up there. But the point is they're making a big deal of it internationally. Now, why is this important? And if, again, if you're new to us, you need to understand, I mean, you may have heard about this situation. It's important for a number of reasons. Biblically, the Temple Mount is center stage in last day's events before the coming of Christ. It's ground zero, you know, center stage. There's going to be a third temple built on the Temple Mount in the city of Jerusalem in unbelief of Jesus Christ as the Messiah. It will be the scene of events that will, when they take place, you can start counting down the time. Christ will have returned in uh, three and a half years after this temple that is built and the sacrifices restored after they're stopped. From that time, you get a three and a half year period, 1,290 days, according to Daniel 12, 11. And then at that time, the Lord Jesus will have returned. That's why our eyes are always on the Temple Mount. <laughs> like we say, Israel is God's clock. Uh, the, the nation is the hour hand. The, City of Jerusalem is the minute hand, but the Temple Mount is the second hand. So we keep an eye on that. Okay, we've got two books on the subject we deal with in our book, 25 Signs from Near the End, uh, Sign 8. Preparations will be made to build the third temple where we talk about this in some detail to explain it. And that's that'll give you an idea of what's going on. And finally, an entire book on the subject, The Jews, Jerusalem, and the Coming Temple. They're both free downloads from our website, Educating Our World. Please take advantage of it. <clears throat> Now, headline number three, this is this is really scary. The bedroom window at Netanyahu's home was hit on Saturday's Hezbollah drone strike. This is from the Times of Israel. The military sensor allows publication of an image showing the explosion which cracked the glass but didn't penetrate the Caesarea home. Hezbollah takes full and complete and exclusive responsibility. So a drone fired by Hezbollah from Lebanon at Prime Minister Netanyahu's home in Caesarea on Saturday hit and did cause damage to its residents when it exploded. And finally, they've, they've released that. And we had a story yesterday that said that, but there was no documentation of it. Now the military censors, okay, we're going to show you what happened. They do. Uh, it was previously barred from publication, the image. Now it's been shown. Uh, no injuries. Netanyahu and his wife were not at home. Hezbollah said in a statement that they take full and complete exclusive responsibility for the Caesarea uh, 
operation targeting Netanyahu, echoing Iranian statements to distance the Islamic Republic from the apparent assassination attempt to launch by its proxy. Now, again, Iran is responsible for this, we know, but Hezbollah is wanting to take the credit of the blame. Now, here's the sad thing. As we mentioned, no comments from Biden or Harris on the assassination attempt, none whatsoever. They the attempt on Netanyahu's life. They didn't even respond, sitting publicly or call him. Donald Trump did call Bibi. All right, our last story, and here we go. Nothing surprises us anymore. Joe Biden embraces Trump lawfare. Lawfare is when meaning they're using the courts and law to uh, take political opponents out of the loop, in other words, in elections and the such like. And here's what he said. We got to lock him up. He actually said this is a Breitbart story. He let the veil slip during a Thursday stop in New Hampshire. He told a small crowd, because that's all he ever gets, is small crowds, uh, uh, we got to lock him up during a screed on his nemesis, Donald Trump, according to several reports that people were there. The president had restrained himself from publicly endorsing jailing Trump for years. He later collected himself and attempted to clean up the mess he created. <clears throat> lock him up politically, Biden said, report Stephen Michael. Lock him out. That's what we have to do. In other words, he's trying to walk back what he said, but we all know what he said. He wants him locked up. And the story here from Breitbart, it goes into detail about, you know, when Biden did this a couple of years ago, 2022, when he knew Trump was going to run again for president. That's when the lawsuits started coming against Trump, like three within a week, uh, basically to keep him out of the, uh, you know, out of the nomination process. But of course, that didn't happen. <clears throat> Now, also, former President Trump's campaign is calling for Vice President Kamala Harris to condemn Joe Biden's lock him up remarks, but we're not going to hold our breath waiting for that. So nothing should surprise us right now. Here's our ex explanation of what how we look at this. That comes out of the mouth of the senile old man who was bitter that he was replaced as the Democratic candidate in the White House. He still is very, very bitter. He has a little less than three months to do more damage. And as far as Israel is concerned, he and Blinken are now irrelevant, especially if Trump wins the White House. Now, sadly, during the Biden administration, uh, U.S. has become in so many ways a banana republic where you could have these court cases against a, a major candidate. This is what banana republics do. It's what the United States has done. But let me tell you something. If Harris gets in, it'll be ex exponentially worse. And we don't know what's going um, um, to happen. It's less than two weeks. We're praying very heavily. And again, the Lord's in control no matter what happens. But we'll wait and see. One thing we know what's going to happen. It's going to be a mess that, that we can guarantee. And so we just pray. But again, we're optimistic. We see the blue skies ahead because, again, we've read the last chapter of the book. And we know we win because God tells us that. And then we also uh, want to encourage you because of that, as you live your life each day, make sure you vote if you're here in America uh, and also make sure you pray and then uh, God's will be done. And we'll just, you know, whatever happens, we'll, we'll deal with it and we'll go forward. OK, anyway, I'm Don Stewart. Thank you so much for watching today and being part of this, for praying for us. And until next time, as always, may the Lord richly, richly bless you.